Hello everybody, AJ Rysick here, and another Linux OS review. Today we're taking a look at Manjaro Cinnamon 15.09 in 64-bit. Now, with Manjaro's 15.09 release cycle, uh, I've got to say, you know, the, the standard editions, which are the KDE and the XFCE, they've been nice. Um, you know, I already did a review on the XFCE. But I've got to say, the community released editions are what are really knocking it out of the ballpark in this in this cycle. Uh, you know, we're looking at the cinnamon here; it is, it is just phenomenal. Also, the the Fluxbox version, I was playing around with that. Probably doing a review on that one as well. Very nice. Um, just you know, all these community editions are great this release cycle. So you know, two thumbs up, not just to the Manjaro team, but to uh, you know, to all the people in the community that are volunteering to uh, develop these community editions. So let's take a look at the release announcement on the Manjaro webpage. See so here we got Manjaro Cinnamon Edition 1509-1. With the release of 15.09-1, we changed our visual approach on things with cinnamon. For instance, we now use standard Plymouth. The background got changed in light DM. We took a spin on our wallpapers and icon themes. Cinnamon got updated to the latest 2.6 series with all its enhancements. Package highlights includes the... I'm gonna, I think this is pronounced Maia. Uh, I may be butchering that, and if, it, if I am, I'm sorry. Um... So anyway, we got the Maya theme, uh, 4.1 LTS kernel, uh, changes to Plymouth, uh, LibreOffice 5.0 series, and the late, latest Manjaro tools. As usual, this release comes with our advanced graphical installer, thus, and Calamari's, as well as the command line installer. Default kernel is 4.1. Stable branch was used to create these install media. Please give us feedback and report any issues with this release. Well, let's take a look at our desktop. As you can see right in the center, we've got our little Manjaro welcome screen. And this will pop up when you boot your system. Now you can select this uh, right down here. You can either select or deselect that, depending on whether you want that to continue to appear at boot up. And even if you close it up and want to use it as reference later on, you can go to your menu, type in welcome and boom it'll pull the welcome screen back up for you but anyway Manjaro probably was not the first to come up with a welcome screen but they were probably the first to come up with one that was so inclusive as far as uh, lots of pertinent information for you especially for the new user uh, you know we've got links to not only all the social media down here across the bottom but also documentation uh, you know, the README, the release info, uh, links to the wiki, links to the forum chat room, you know, uh, links to the project so that people can get involved, how to build Manjaro, and, you know, of course, how to donate to the project. So, you know, it's got all that information that a new user may want quick access to. This way, you don't have to go digging for it. You know, there's links right there for you. So, uh, a very smart thing to do especially for the new user as far as desktop layout we've got a single panel across the bottom over here on the left hand side we've got our menu which you can either click it or it is also keyed to uh, to the super or uh, or window key whichever you want to call it and it is searchable so let's say we're looking for LibreOffice and you say boom it'll start pulling up LibreOffice so Cinnamon's got a very nice menu. So right next to that, we have our show desktop, which if you click that, it'll minimize every open window that's on the desktop. And then we've got quick launches for Firefox, our terminal, and Nemo, which is our file manager. And then we've got all of our open windows, and you can go and switch between various windows just by clicking each one of these. Next to that, we have our workplace, workplace, wow, uh, workplace switcher. So if you click on that, you can see it shows you all of your workspaces, and then just click on whichever one you want to go to. 
and then next to that we've got our power management uh, removable drives we've got our calendar which you click on that and it'll pop up with the calendar as as well as the date and time we've got our volume indicator and then we've got our tray items which for me it's showing the simple screen recorder uh, Dropbox right next to that is the indicator for pa or PAMIC which is our package management and if you right click on that you can either go to the update manager or the package manager for adding software and then we've got uh, our clipboard manager we have our internet connections and then we've got uh, we can click on this to show all of our open windows and switch between them and then next to that we've got this indicator which gives you quick access to system settings and then uh, power management as far as log on log off power all that kind of stuff so let's talk a little bit about theming as you can see right here we've got our default background very nice but if you want to go and change it there is quite a variety of different backgrounds available if you come down here to this folder where it lists backgrounds you can see there's there's a bunch listed here then we got our default background i have got some more backgrounds here in this folder and then the standard uh, Attawa uh, like I said lots of different ones to choose from and of course you could go and add your own so while we're on the subject of theming, let me go and open up our system settings and we'll look at themes. And by default, we've got the vertex dark for our window borders, uh, which would be our, uh, our GTK uh, theme. Uh, icons is the Maya, I guess is how, once again, I, I hope I'm not butchering that. Um, that's our icon theme controls are the vertex controls uh, mouse pointer is simple soft and the cinnamon theme is once again vertex uh, but as you can see there is a fair number of different options available here uh, if you want to change from the, the default theming same thing with the uh, the icons not a huge but uh, you know there's a few there and uh, come down to the controls once again a variety there and uh, you know even for the uh, the Manjaro desktop theme you know there's a fair number of, of different options there well, let's take a look at some of the software that's included and we'll start out under our accessories we've got our archive manager disk management Interesting for file management, we've got both uh, Nautilus files and Nemo, which Nemo is a fork of Nautilus files. It's what by default comes with uh, comes with the Cinnamon desktop. Personally, I like Nemo better, uh, but uh, you know the way it's set up, you've got your choice. And one of the big things that I really like about Nemo is if you go under View is having the multi-pane view now granted in Nautilus you can go and open multiple instances so you know you can move from move files from one window to the next and whatnot but uh, to me I just I, I so much like Nemo better all right so where were we all right we talked about that uh, we've got gedit for our text editor we've got G calculator for calculator we've got our HP device manager uh, parcelite which is our clipboard management we've got our terminal and a screenshot tool and coming down to graphics we've got our PDF viewer we've got our image viewer LibreOffice draw under internet um, I added Dropbox so I had access to some files uh, but we've got Firefox for our internet we've got uh, hex chat for our chat client and then we've got Pigeon internet messenger and then Thunderbird for our email under office we've got the LibreOffice suite which we already mentioned is in the LibreOffice 5 series under programming we've got a variety of different uh, QT tools sound and video uh, GVC view I added that as well as simple screen recorder for doing the video 
Uh, we've also got our pulse audio volume control and then VLC media player for our media player needs, which uh, personally VLC I think is probably the, the best uh, media player out there. It just seems to play anything you throw at it. Uh, okay, under admin, we've got our package management. We've got Decomf Editor, which if you're not familiar with Decomf Editor, it allows you to make settings to all kinds of things that uh, you, you may not have a GUI option for. Which, well, let me just go and open it up so you can take a look at it. I think probably a lot of you are already familiar with it, but uh, if you're not... You, know, you can open it up and just go under the various categories. Come, like say, come down here to cinnamon. You can go and make different changes to right here the background, to the session, desolates. I mean, you can see just tons and tons of uh, configuration options that uh, it gives you access to. So, like I said, uh, for stuff that you don't normally have access to a GUI uh, um, uh, options. Uh, decomp editor is great. Uh, let's see, where was I? Uh, we talked about decomp. We got gparted for our um, partition management. ISO USB will allow you to burn an ISO to a USB, hence the name. Um, settings for light DM. And then we've got our logs here. We've got uh, printer management. There's the Manjaro welcome screen, print settings. Uh, software updater, system log, system monitor, and there's the terminal again, and then our users and groups. Under preferences, this is mainly the stuff that's going to fall into system settings. So we got uh, user accessibility, account details, the applets, background, that sort of thing. Uh, under places, that you know, it gives you a quick access to, let's say, documents, music, pictures, you know, all the various. Uh, all the various uh, uh, file categories or main folders, however you want to look at it, uh, that you have in your file management. And then we've also got an option for our recent files down here. One of the things I have long liked about Manjaro is how easy it is to change your kernel. And let me go and drag over. This is the Manjaro settings manager. And got a variety of different settings that you can play around with here. But uh, right here we've got the kernel management. And as you can see, I am running Linux kernel 4.1.10-1, which is the LTS. And you can see it's listed as running and installed. But if I wanted to upgrade, say, to 4.2.3-1, all I need to do is click install, and boom, it'll install it for me. Or maybe there's a piece of software that uh, is not playing nice with kernel 4.1. Well, we could go and backport or regress however you want to look at it to one of these earlier kernels uh, like say maybe 318 which was also an LTS so was uh, 314 so you know very easy to go and change kernels and I wish more distributions would go to something like this you know if you're used to changing kernels on say any of the Ubuntu distributions you know while it's not really hard you really got to pay attention to what you're doing so that you don't botch it up because if you do botch it up you're probably talking about doing a fresh install and uh, while we're on the Manjaro settings manager, you can see you've got some, some various options there for the language packages that you've got installed, uh, what you're using for language, user accounts, um, time and date settings. Um, you know, for a lot of desktop environments, this isn't too big of a deal just because, um, you know, you've got options built into the, the desktop environment. But for those that don't, you know, maybe you're using... I don't know, Fluxbox or one of the other real simple window managers, you know, having something like this available um, really makes it easy for, for managing your time and date and whatnot. And then uh, also this notification settings. You know, you may be somebody that, uh, you know, you don't want any notifications at all or only from certain things. Uh, this gives you the option to go and play around with what you're getting notified about. As I mentioned earlier, pretty much everything has worked right out of the box for me. I did run into a little bit of issue with Video Driver, and, and I kind of knew that I was I was going to self-inflict this on me. 
and and what that comes down to is I've got an AMD card on this computer it's a Sapphire 7700 and for whatever reason the proprietary drivers from AMD they do not play well with arch based distributions uh, you know I found that out on previous versions of Manjaro Antegros arch proper you know on on all of them uh, you know that proprietary driver just does not work well but I wanted to install it anyway just to see how it worked lots of video tearing and uh, you know just was not a good experience so I switched to the open source driver and boom everything was running great so you know I don't really consider that M Manjaro issue as much as it is the problem with that open source or that closed source driver well that about finishes this review up definitely give this distribution a a look see because what they have done here uh, just you know is phenomenal if I was looking for a you know an out of the box cinnamon experience I would definitely go here rather than go to uh, the Linux Mint while Linux Mint is fine I really like what they've done with the theming here um, you know the software options it all makes sense you know this is just an all-around great distribution so definitely check it out as always leave comments questions all that kind of stuff down below and I will get to them as soon as possible give us a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and as always I will see you all on the next video thanks a lot